unlucky people, those ones who are able to fast, and those who are able to contribute, and those who are able to perform prayers in daily basis, and those who are able to help the others in different ways. They were really the lucky ones. From the rewards of God, there will be those rewards they will see in this world, but the remaining and the greatest reward is expecting them in the hereafter. They will be rewarded in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept these righteous deeds from all of us and also from all the Muhammad, all the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam around the world. Brothers and sisters, Ramadan was a month of training for every single Muslim who considered it. It was indeed a month of training. And there were so many great lessons that we should carry on with even after Ramadan. The Lord of Ramadan is the Lord of all the other months. The Lord of Taraweeh prayers is the Lord of the Isha prayer, Maghrib prayer, Fajr prayer, Dhuhr and Asr prayer. The Lord of Sadaqah that we give during Ramadan is the same Lord who orders us to help the poor throughout the other months during the year. There are so many people around the world who because mainly because they are disconnected from the mercy of God, they suffer in daily basis. Ramadan gives us the chance to reconnect to our Lord. For those hearts who are disconnected, it gives them a chance to connect again to their Lord so they can benefit from His mercy and from His forgiveness but also the believers who are connected with Him will be able to benefit way much more from His mercy and way much more from His forgiveness. Allah Jalla Jalalu in His Holy Book, He says, He directs to those people who lost their hopes, who lost that connection with God. لا تقنتوا من رحمة الله Do not disconnect your hopes from the mercy of God. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jamia. God is the one who forgives all the sins. He comes up with mercy to you. So do not lose that hope of connecting with Him. Do not lose the hope that He is going to forgive you and show mercy to your soul. That mercy, that love, and that forgiveness will make you be a better person. Wallahi, it will make you be a better person for your family, your community, and the world in general. More believers we have, more productive people we have. More believers and God-fearing people we have, more sincere, there is more sincerity out there. Brothers and sisters, also from Ramadan we learned to get close to our people. And God related the acceptance of fasting with the way we treat people. It gave you and me an opportunity to sit with family members, to sit with relatives, to sit with community members. Why? So we can be people of community, not people of isolation people of community and in this way we can be more productive as well we ate iftars together we ate sahur together we performed the prayer together we were present at this very place right here when we contributed for the masjid all together we are again present here today giving the sadaqat al-fitr or zakat al-fitr for the refugees of Burma and Syria and other places around the world. So we are doing these deeds together, which again symbolizes that 
symbolizes that God wants us to be united. Allah wants us to be one body. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith he said, the believers are like one body. If a part of that body hurts, the entire body feels that pain. The entire body is hurt. So Ramadan served that for us to be re reconnected to each other, but also it reminds us to continue with this connection later on after Ramadan and not to disconnect from each other. God made it possible for shaitan to be locked up. And we were able to perform some more righteous deeds because shaitan was locked up. Now, any, any individual who is going to go after the guidance of Islam, any individual who is going to remain connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he promises them that shaitan will not bother them. They will be protected from the cursed devil throughout the year. For that, there is a verse in the Quran that says that my servants, the believers, they are those who you have no authority over them. Shaitan has no authority over the true believers of God. They cannot, he cannot mess around with them. So, Ramadan teaches us that as long as we remain connected to the teachings of Islam, as long as we remain connected to the tradition of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will be safe. Otherwise, Shaitan, devil is going to take us in his own path without even realizing and thinking that we are doing okay. We are all right, but actually we are on the wrong path. So, take that with you from Ramadan. Brothers and sisters, Ramadan also taught us sincerity. Ramadan taught us sincerity. When you wake up early in the morning to eat sahur, even before Fajr, when you stand there for a long time, every single night for the Taraweeh prayers, when you fast every single day for the sake of God, that shows that you have sincerity. It shows that you have sincerity in faith. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to equip you with this sincerity for the rest of the year. So again, Ramadan becomes a test, becomes a training for you, so you can be, you can continue with this training throughout the year. You can survive for the rest of the year. And we see how people are suffering nowadays in the world simply because they got no sincerity. We see thousands of Muslims being killed in Syria because there is no sincerity. We see thousands of Muslims being killed in Burma nowadays because there is no sincerity. Almost every day in Palestine there are people, be, people being killed because there is no sincerity. What do I mean by sincerity? I mean that people think about their personal interest before they think about the others when it comes to leading large number of people. Sayyidul Qawmi Khadimuhum Yaqul Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The master of the nation is the servant of that nation. The master of a nation is the servant of that nation. If you want to be the master of that nation, be the servant. Serve the community, serve the nation. This is what Islam teaches us. Nowadays, unfortunately, in so many Muslim countries, we have unqualified people. They might be qualified and from the education standpoint of view. They might have a couple classes here and there, but spiritually, they are rotten. They have rotten souls. They have no sincerity. First thing comes their own selfishness. First thing in their mind comes their own pockets. 
and their own interests above anything else. And this is not what Islam teaches us. Islam teaches us to sacrifice. If you're going to be leaders, you have to sacrifice. You have to sacrifice a lot. Otherwise, you can't serve people. You can't serve people. Those who make their name around the world nowadays and people love them is because they put, they sacrifice. They, they sacrifice, that's why people love them. And that's what our Muslim leaders all around the world, they need to learn these things. They need to be sincere people in order to have less deaths around the world in order to have less suffering around the world. If there is no sincerity, there is no blessings. If there is no blessing, there is no mercy. If there is no mercy, the doors of evil are open. And we ask Allah to protect us, inshallah, from these calamities and to give us sincerity, to make us among those who will continue with the sincerity later on, even after Ramadan. Brothers and sisters, I will close this khutbah of Eid by also reminding you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to test your abilities during the month of Ramadan. Your abilities were tested. How strong you are, how much you can perform. Fasting is a sacrifice. Donating Putting efforts is a sacrifice. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you to see how capable you are. Not that he doesn't know, but he wants you to know that you can be able to perform the prayers. You can be able to remain even without food and drink. But as you remain without food and drink, if your body can be able to survive from food and drink for many hours throughout the day, your inner self can be able to remain without sins as well. Yes, your inner self is able, is capable of remaining without sins as well. So as you purify your body through fasting, purify your soul, purify your soul as well. And you did that during the month of Ramadan, Continue with that purification throughout the year. Don't give up. And brothers and sisters, when, when we say testing your abilities, it means that we can be generous people throughout the year, not only throughout Ramadan. It means that we can show our great effort in the path of God throughout the year, not only during the month of Ramadan. Now, it means that a believer can be a, right, a, a leader in righteousness. A Muslim can be a leader in righteousness. Why shouldn't we have the biggest donors to the poor countries from Muslim communities. Why shouldn't we have people who run after the poor, no matter what they are, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims? Why don't we have the Muslims in the first line whenever something bad happens to a society? The Muslims are present. I'm not saying they are not. But why don't we have them in the first line? If others can do that, why Muslims can't? Muslims, as a matter of fact, Muslims should be the first ones to initiate things. Muslims should be the first ones to initiate the good things in the world. I will close it with a story during the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Remember when he was preparing for the battle of Handa. He opened a big trench with his companions and they were in front of a rock. They were able to, they were trying to break that rock, but it was impossible. They didn't have much power to do that. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tried to break the rock, 
and then he said, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. In the name of God, God is the greatest. I see, he said, the palaces of Sham, Damascus, and the other countries around were occupied by the Byzantine Empire. I see its palaces being handed over to us Muslims. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, for the second time. He said, I see the palaces of Persia being given over to us Muslims. On the third time he said, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, I see the keys of Sana'a, the capital of Yemen, being handed over to me, and I'm here right at this place. He was preparing for war. Quran in Surah al azab describes the believer situation by saying, Hunalika abtuli al-mu'minun wa zulzilu zilzalan shadida. There, the believers were shaken and they were tested. They were shaken very heavily. Shaken very heavily. So it was not a joke. The war that they were facing, it was not a joke. They were tested. But Prophet ﷺ finds that opportunity right there in the middle of the trouble, in the middle of despair. He finds the moment and he surprises everybody by saying, don't worry, don't worry. Sham is ours. Yemen is ours. Persia, the great Persian Empire, Persia is ours too. With a few, with a small group of believers, a few thousand believers taking over the whole empire. Two empires, not one, but two. The Byzantine, Byzantine Empire and also the uh, Persian Empire. SubhanAllah. Why was this? This was because there were people of sacrifice. There were leaders in righteousness. They were not lazy people. They didn't say, oh, we're going to come to the masjid only for eat prayer. As long as we come for eat prayer, alhamdulillah, we're fine. No, 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 no. Allah is not okay with us. No, no, no. God is not okay with us. God doesn't want us to come only twice a year. Astaghfirullah. He wants us to be full-time Muslims, not part-time Muslims. The time is going to come for Muslims to be leaders in all different fields of life. Wallahi, maybe we're going to reach that time. Because God promises that. But what is your and my contribution to this? Where are we? Where are we going to be? We'll be left aside, alone, isolated, and be a part of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us for for righteousness, for worship, for brotherhood, for caring, and other great qualities that we must possess. At the end, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, inshallah, with His countless blessings, to accept the efforts of every single individual, male and female, from our communities. I want to also thank, from the bottom of my heart, all of those generous contributors during the month of Ramadan. We had great contributors, wallahi. We also, we also had people who, uh, who were, there were so many people in need and they helped a lot. I've seen with my own eyes, in our offices, in the masjid they came, they contributed so much. May Allah bless them and their families, inshallah. May Allah bless those people too, who uh, provided iftar almost in, in daily basis at the masjid there. They provided iftar, not because they wanted to show off, that they have money, or to show off that they can cook, but to bring the community together, to bring the people together with each other. May Allah bless them, inshallah, and their families. And as I said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reveal upon us His tranquility, uh, send upon our hearts His tranquility, and make us leaders in righteousness, inshallah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
الحمد لله حمد الكاملين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله ومن والاه تعظيما لنبيه وتكريما لفخامة شأن شرف صفيه فقال عز وجل من قائل مقبلا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك في العالمين حميد مجيد وارض الله عن ساداتنا ببكر وعمر وثمان وعلي وعن الصحابة أجمعين وعن التابعين وتابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اغفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم انصرنا على أنفسنا اللهم اعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم تقبل منا صلاتنا وصيامنا يا مولانا وجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين وجعلنا من عبادك المخلصين يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله يقول عز وجل وقل الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر